Welcome to The Hustle Code by Detroit King Tape. Narrated by the one and only Detroit King Tape. I would like to thank the creator for guiding me on this path, plus allowing me to learn the necessary information through my experiences, which brought this book into existence. I would like to give a special thanks to Andre Bear White and everyone who participated in making this project a reality. Thanks to all my supportive family, loved ones, and friends. Again, most importantly, thanks to the Creator for giving me the light plus guidance to persevere through obstacles that would have broken many. I will forever be grateful as I continue to manifest greatness on this journey of health and hustle. Salute to all the hustlers making it happen, to all the hustlers who fell short, and to all the hustlers who gave their lives trying to feed their families and chase their dreams. Rest in health. Also, a special thanks to all of the listeners. If you're listening now, I hope something inspires you in this book and you gain something from it. Thank you. Disclaimer. Due to the exaggerated nature of clout chasing, we will not be doing any name dropping in this book, nor will any of the memoirs be detailed accurately as they occurred. This is to protect the real and not give life to the weak. Introduction. Two things you must have in life, health and hustle. Not having both is like buying a new car without wheels or flying a wingless airplane. You're stuck. You become grounded with limited choices, preventing you from reaching your goals or being stranded in a dead-end job to unbalanced relationships and low self-esteem. Humble in the jungle. Forget what you heard. You'll get eaten alive in everyday life if you don't have a hustler's mentality. Walked on, passed by, looked over, pushed and shoved into a box, Label is insignificant. Sounds familiar? The Hustle Code can show you how to master advantageous moves, how to change a flat life with a high-flying attitude, how to get credit for your ideas, how not to be a stunt double for a turn, how to put yourself in a mindset of not accepting second best. Hustlers don't wait to get chosen. They present the options and select the best outcome. These hustle codes are designed for people who want to maximize their position and take it to another level. The hustle code is the blueprint to change circumstances, perceptions, and redirect energy for your prerogative. Anything in demand inherits a hustle. You have a product, idea, or self-image, whatever it is. The hustle code provides references and real-life examples on how to turn a negative into a positive outcome. This audiobook isn't about losing or winning, failure or success, though its contents can be used to achieve favorable ends. The intent is to bring out your inner hustler to enrich and magnify your life despite your background or current position. Allow these codes to evoke your hustler's mentality so you can crack the hustle codes for yourself. You won't just learn how to play the game, but to own it. You will learn valuable principles to use as a guide in your daily existence. The Hustle Code promotes living life's potential to the utmost, where life will serve you so you can really live for a change. As an OG from the east side of Detroit, Michigan, a city with an infamous reputation for drug kingpins and notorious crime organizations, I learned to hustle by growing up in the streets. My first lesson was, turns aren't given, they're taken. You can't wait for things to happen or for someone to give you something. You have to set it in motion yourself. My experience from the School of Hard Knocks taught me unwritten rules that I codified to benefit all walks of life. I learned that it isn't just about surviving day-to-day life on the streets, but thriving as well. Don't you want to have your cake and eat it too? Sure you do. No question about it. And you don't even have to like cake. Take control of your world. The Hustle Code is your guide to excelling in your environment and creating a fulfilling reality. The street principles I compiled were intended to serve the next generation of hustlers I mentored. By earning the title OG and coming out on top in the underworld, it led me to being acknowledged by my youngsters and peers. A serial entrepreneur, I have a variety of businesses, including my DWI record label and CM Verde tequila brand. My colleagues, business partners, and associates were all impressed by my transformation. They saw me as a true success story. Their intrigue would always be followed by inquiry. How did I turn my life around to benefit myself and others in a positive way? It was my hustle codes. 
I saw that the codes could apply to anyone, business people, college students, homebodies, blue-collar workers, white-collar workers. Anyone can use these codes to accomplish their goals or have what they so desire. Each chapter of the Hustle Code has an epigram or quote derived from my previous works and music, books, and audio discourse. Following the quotes are anecdotes to introduce my 10 Hustle Codes to the listeners. I also provide memoirs as examples for the readers to have a better understanding of the Hustle Codes through my experiences. These memoirs are short stories that do not follow any specific chronological order or timeline. They are merely here to express in-depth examples of my experiences. Each chapter ends with an in-depth commentary and conclusion titled, Bag It Up, followed by Moving Forward. This is a section meant to encourage the listener to realize their potential as they journey through these hustle codes. As a self-proclaimed straight shooter, I have included straight talk and notes to the readers who appreciate candidness and encouraging tips. It is notable to mention that my ability to speak street and corporate jargon respectfully and practice to communicate ideas and form relationships. My dualistic manner of speech in this book is intended to appeal to the listeners on both sides of the fence, to those who are fluent in street vernacular and those who are not. The core of each hustle code focuses directly on the mind. Although each code is different, all are interwoven fabric that protects and shields a hustler like Kevlar from slipping or getting taken by buzzer hustlers, only out to capitalize off of a genuine hustler. Recognizing the hustler in you will be a boost to your self-worth, showcasing the value you bring to the table. You are the currency. You are the product and natural resource. Train your mind with these hustle codes and watch your life change. Shape your reality as you imagine it could be, from a sheeple's mentality into that of a hustler. This is Merriam-Webster's definition of a hustler. One who obtains money by fraud or deceit. Scammer, swindler. Now this is my true definition as a hustler. One who learns how to change the trajectory of their life, using their mentality to outwit any opposing forces hindering their survival or success. One who knows how to take water and make wine. To make something out of nothing. The know-how to utilize every tool afforded to them to persevere. Detroit King Tape. Chapter 1. Environment. Some look out of their window and see a desert, while others see a forest. Let's cut to the chase. People are not the product of their external environment. Your surroundings do not solely dictate your mentality. The mind is forged by the environment first and foremost. Your mentality is composed of perception, conception, and imagination where thoughts, feelings, and behavior are rooted in an experience. A hustler is very optimistic, thus having the ability to render his environment beneficial. The way you view your life will bring about the desired outcome. If you see it as unfair or bleak, your attitude and actions will create such circumstances. Your environment is malleable, and hustlers can create their own lanes no matter where they are in life. Somehow it feels good to stay clean when you grew up in shit. Oh, yeah. shit Mont Elliott Street. Growing up on the east side of Detroit in the 80s was hard times for many. Dilapidated homes, rundown businesses, and burnt apartment buildings left from the 1967 riots were my reality. My mother, older sister, younger brother, and I lived on Mont Elliott Street in one of those rotten wooden houses that shook off hazardous dust from asbestos sidings onto the ground which no doubt probably blew inside through the window cracks, filling the chip lead painted walls throughout the house. Not to mention, dusting the piss-stained mattress that leaned against the side of my cousin's house around the corner, where we jumped and flipped on for fun. Sometimes we play at the graveyard up the street. It was better than hanging out at the Heidelberg Project Street. That's where this dude named Tyree Guyton splashed paint on a house and put hundreds of spooky dolls on it. It looked like something out of a Stephen King movie to me. What the fuck was on his mind, I thought. Coming up, I never wanted much. Long as we had enough, but that didn't last long because shit wasn't adding up. Started wanting Teller Street. My mother would drop me and my siblings off at my grandmother's, Mommy Deer House on the west side for days on end. 
The houses in that neighborhood were mostly shabby, aluminum siding homes. Mommy Deer's corner house was next to scrap yards, vehicle impoundment lots, and railroads off Linden Avenue. My mother's cousins also left their children with Mommy Deer. Other cousins, mostly older, lived there also. I had a lot of fun with my cousins and friends on Tuller. Us kids spent most of our time outside playing hide-and-seek or water games from the fire hydrant our older cousins turned on for us. We weren't allowed inside the house when the adults were there drinking liquor, smoking marijuana and cigarettes, and listening to grown folks' music, what Mommy Deer called it. This would go on throughout the day and the greater part of the night. Somewhere in between, we'd have dinner from food assistant meals from the Focus Hope charity program. Soon after we ate, we were sent back outside until the streetlights came on. When we came back in, we had to go straight upstairs while the grown-ups carried on. Going into the kitchen that night for a cup of water, I found myself in the middle of a horror film the instant I turned on the lights. An army of roaches would ransack the kitchen, then scatter in all directions across the worn tiles. It was a testament to a grim environment. There was only one bathroom in the house located downstairs. When the adults were down there partying, we had to use a piss bucket upstairs to relieve ourselves and empty it later when the house cleared. We also took turns sharing the bathtub before bedtime. It was up to a dozen children sleeping foot to head on a couple of twin beds and on the floor. On the weekends, the racket downstairs started in the late evening. Loud music, swearing, and fights. Oddly, it sounded like good times to us children. Occasionally, the grown-ups would summon us downstairs to dance for them. My older cousins would tell neighborhood stories and urban legends. We would crack jokes till we went to sleep. From the home of Bella, the road is seven miles. When niggas flip sacks to style, we gotta stay sharp. Don't give a fuck about how famous you are. I'm from Detroit, dog. You better know where you are. East Seven Mile. My mother moved us to a working class neighborhood. Brick bungalow houses, nice cars, and thriving businesses up and down East Seven Mile. We became the bougie family us kids joked about for not having roaches and rats. The corner stores were owned mostly by Arabs and taken over by winos begging for change. I didn't mind giving them a dollar or two to buy me and my friends liquor. It was a lively neighborhood. People were everywhere. It also was the height of the crack era. Drug dealers gathered in front of neighborhood houses or the Coney Island 24-hour restaurant, flaunting jewelry and new cars. Drug addicts roamed East Seven Mile all day and night, carrying things they had stolen to sell for crack. The hustle was all around me. Stolen cars stripped in alleys, undercover prostitutes, people selling food stamps half off for cash, and boosters selling hot designer clothing. I was taught that nothing comes to sleep but for dreams. That's why I pull all nighters in the spots with the fiends. See me, I see shit from another perspective. A hustler's perspective. I see that brick is a necklace. High school. Osborne High School was an eye-opener. Fly girls with attitudes, mostly sedity and some of mixed race, dressed in the latest fashion. Some of the dudes were as well. A few came to school in their own cars. Student cars didn't compare to the older predator rides that parked in front of Osborne. Older guys would wait for their tenderoni after school. They drove foreign luxury vehicles and wore diamond-studded jewelry. Regular schoolboys didn't stand a chance at getting a date with a fly girl schoolmate, better known as a sack chaser. The older guys also scooped up young dudes in between class who were eager to sell drugs for them in crack houses. The winner would be my salvation. Snow shoveling those days was damn near a monopoly for a young, enterprising teen such as myself. Other guys my age felt shoveling snow was whack and beneath them, acting like it's better to look cool on the porch with empty pockets. Other dudes were busy selling drugs, making too much easy money to waste their time shoveling snow. My only competition was crackheads trying to shovel up on money to buy crack. I passed by them on the sidewalk with their heads hung low after the homeowners passed over the job to me. When I wasn't shoveling snow, I was working at a corner store on 7 Mile and Beeland, counting 10 